times when it comes to our community, a lot of black men struggle with their sexuality. And you can tell in how they treat their wives, their baby mamas, a lot of men don't even really like women. They like the feeling of the sex. They like the feeling of the intimacy. But you can tell if a lot of men were able to be with their homeboys, they would. And this is going to go viral because it's the truth. But the truth hurts. Because you can tell in how a man feels with how he treats his wife. I'm not talking about regular arguments and regular situations that happen because all women are not perfect. But when you go to the point of beating your wife and beating your baby mom and it's always an issue and you're always angry, that's because you're struggling with your sexuality. That's not the whole spectrum of what it is, but I guarantee you it's on the list. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So, shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So, if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So, look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. So when a nigga, when you get around a nigga and he's just so uptight and insecure, all that is a facade, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a facade. I'm telling you, it's a facade. You good? Well, big. I done been with so many. Big sexy was my telling, whole life, child. He was telling me how I don't know why he's telling me this, shit, man. How f one out of six men will let will get his sucked by a gay man for for the right dollar. That's what he was saying. But you can't have conversations with men because nobody be real, and I get it because certain things you certain things is people. Let me just tell you the reality of what it is. Sure. Every human being, my mother, you, it's things we're gonna take to the grave that nobody will ever know. Okay. It sound good. Everybody can sit in here and say, mm -mm, "I'm an open book." Mm -mm. You got men say, mm -mm, "I've never slept with a man." Okay. Well, we'll take that. Perfect. You don't even have to elaborate no more. It's certain things we'll just take to the grave with us that people don't have to sell their business. But as a gay black man, I know the reality of what it is. When you get around a man and he is so uncomfortable, I promise you. 70% of the time is because he's gay. Mm. Because as people, you're going to always be uncomfortable around a person when you feel like they may clock your tea. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here in front of your wife. You feel like I may tell her, ooh. You're... So you're going to always be on edge. You're in front of your homeboys. You just want to make it seem as though you is the furthest one that approve of shit like that. And those be the most curious. Those be the most ones that tried it. It's a facade. It's literally a facade. That's it. It's a facade. As a 30-year-old man, I'm like, wow. Playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. We talk about the hood and the community that we grew up in, right? And that mentally fucking us up. Yes. Or it could be that a nigga come from a certain environment that that was looked down on so much yes. that I can't even be cool. Absolutely. Like, bro, like even me being friends with you, I had to... It was a certain level that I had to unlock in myself to be able to be open to gay men, like mm -hmm. to be friends with gay men, because I didn't even knew that existed where yes. I'm from, to be honest. So you could be right, right, because you got the experience. But I'm saying there is another level to that where men just don't even know what that looked like. Men can't even process that in their brain because we only used to a certain level mm -hmm. of interaction with a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, that I get because certain things are indoctrinated in us and certain things we are taught. So certain things outside of the norm of fried chicken and rice, we don't know what teriyaki chicken looks like. So anytime I'm eating teriyaki chicken or I go overseas, I don't, I'm not used to teriyaki chicken. I'm used to fried rice and chicken. Mm -hmm. So I get when you're used to the norm of what you are used to and what is taught to you. That is the only thing that you know. But let me tell you something. Coming from experience, okay? Even those that are used to the norm, they get very curious because guess what? As people, it's in our nature to be curious. One day we like lollipops, one day we like Kit Kats. One day we like Reese's Pieces, one day we like white chocolate, one day we want a Snickers. We are just curious human beings, but a lot of people, they don't have the reach or the maturity to have those type of conversations in order to be real enough to say those things. So a lot of times when it comes to our community, a lot of black men struggle with their sexuality. And you can tell in how they treat 
treat their wives, their baby mamas. A lot of men don't even really like women. They like the feeling of the sex. They like the feeling of the intimacy. But you can tell if a lot of men were able to be with their homeboys, they would. And this is going to go viral because it's the truth. But the truth hurts. Because you can tell in how a man feels with how he treats his wife. I'm not talking about regular arguments and regular situations that happen because all women are not perfect. But when you go to the point of beating your wife and beating your baby mama and it's always an issue and you're always angry, that's because you're struggling with your sexuality. That's not the whole spectrum of what it is, but I guarantee you it's on the list. Because when you have anything that's a prized possession and you look at your woman and you adore her and she's a great mother and a great fiance, whatever it is, not saying that she's perfect, but it's a way that you operate in that. When you see a man that's always angry with a woman and he don't like women and he's always saying something Something negative about a woman why is that maybe because he's hurt no yeah he's hurt because he can't walk in his truth he's hurt because really he want to lay down with his homeboy but for the world he has to be with a woman as clear as day i see it happen all the time there's no reason why a man should always be upset with a woman what it is is a lot of men struggle with their sexuality what it is is a lot of men can't walk in their truth what it is is a lot of men have to deal with women for their family's sake for business for image but when a man is constantly aggressive and mean and evil and beating other woman on that list of demons that he's fighting is sexuality yeah no i mean i i don't now clip that no for sure down that's the one this thing ain't about to come here and tell me how to do my job down oh jay we're going up because that's true <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot of people don't agree but that's your business i said what i said let me ask you this though, because even outside of the beating woman, because I feel like that's just that's just weird. From just from my small experience when it comes to like being hurt, right? I think a lot of men. I'm sorry, I can't speak for a lot of men. Myself, it's been times where I wasn't the nicest because I didn't show up for myself first. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is sometimes we as men, I was we were talking about like it's hard being men nowadays. Sometimes as men, all we know is to be a provider. All yeah. we know is to put our lives on the line for our family, yeah. right? And when, that when that's not reciprocated, it hurts, right? But outside of that, a lot of times in doing that, putting ourselves last, putting ourselves on a back burner, we don't show up for ourselves. And when you don't show up for yourself, it's super hard to show up for somebody else, yeah. especially when you feel like they don't appreciate you. So although I understand what you're saying, I'm not saying that you're wrong because again, I wouldn't know, I can't speak for every man. But a lot of that also comes from men just not knowing how to love themselves first. Absolutely. Because if you love yourself first, you're not putting your hands on a woman. If you love yourself first, you're not always upset with your woman. Why? Because you you understand boundaries and you understand when to walk away. You understand these things. But when you when you lack the love for yourself, absolutely, you can't be be there for somebody else. But absolutely. And I think both can coexist. I, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't yes. know. Yeah, I don't know about the other side. But I just know from my perspective of like that hurt and men. We just got to yeah. do a better job at loving ourselves. Absolutely. And I was just telling my mother the other day, because I do get both perspectives. I was just telling my mother the other day, when it comes to a lot of black men, they're only valuable if they have money. Mm. So I get that 100%. Not all, but I do get that it's a spectrum or percentage of men that they are only valuable if they have money. So I do get the struggles and the adversities that black men go through because I'm black before I'm gay. Mm. I'm a black gay man before I'm gay. My sexuality is second. So I do get that. But on the flip side, I also understand that when you look at these relationships and you look at these men, a lot of them are battling so many demons. And on that list is sexuality. I, it's guaranteed 100%. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I can, you agree can argue that. with your friends. But I know the reality of what it is because I walk these streets. I've dealt with these men. I've been with these DL men. Mm. And I lost my virginity to a guy that literally was so adamant about he hated people like me. So I know it's a, that shit be a facade. So I know it's a lot of demons on that list. Yo, I'm, I'm curious is a, such a bad word for this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to know because I always say, I don't really have no problem with gay men. Now, DL men, I really don't fuck with. But I want to be sensitive to the conversation because I understand there may be things that people are bad with mm -hmm. that they might feel like they can't or is a reason for them not to come out. And, and I think that's understandable. But as a straight man, I just think that you should be confident in whoever you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, forget what the world say. Like, if that's who you are, you are. And, and, and to a man that's like, but that download shit, I don't know. I think that's the worst. I think that's the, the worst a man could be. Is down worse low. than worse than being gay, worse than being down low. What about a snitch? Which one you think is worse? Down low. 
Wow. And in the community, them is the two neck and neck. I down think, low and gay. I mean, I think, down, excuse me, down low and a snitch. I think down low is worse because you can't, like a snitch, at least he got the confidence to go on a stand in front of people knowing that it's going to be broadcast. A lot of them don't hit the stand, though. What about the ones that just do the paperwork? Those is cowards. Okay. So a down low man is different shapes. I think when it comes to the community, when we and don't see the somebody, same. when we don't see somebody parade that section, because let me break this down too, is when it comes to black gay men and we're not a monolith. Okay. So it's different shapes and forms and sizes and colors and features. We're all not the same. So just because you see me, I'm a proud sissy. Everybody don't come in forms like me. You have a lot of black gay men who just don't decide to live their sexuality out loud. If you ask them, and they were sitting at a bar, they would tell you they're not down low. So I think when it comes to our community, we think that black gay men are a monolith. And so if you don't see a black gay man wearing a pocketbook or wearing heels or wearing makeup or wearing lashes or he's parading his sexuality, then you think he's on the down low. A lot of men don't be on the down low, but a lot of men do be on the down low. And a lot of men do be on the down low because of the society that we live in. And you would think that it's easier now because of so many different laws and so many different things that have been passed and so many people come out and they're gay and they're happy, but you have still a lot of communities and families who are not accepting you have a lot of baby mamas and a lot of cousins and a lot of sisters who are not understanding, who are not willing to listen. So a lot of things, these men just got to take to the grave with them. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I have an understanding for. It's the ones that come and try to parade me in my life. Mm -hmm. The pastors who get on the pulpit and talk about homosexuality are gay. I done seen that over and over. Uh, those are the ones that need to be pushed into hell's gates. Fact. I'm not talking about those that are just stuck in a hard place of just not knowing how to be comfortable in who they are. Everything is a process. Even though I have been outside, I have never in my life exposed a man. And never. I think one, is so dangerous. I think two, it messes up your hoes. I would never do that because I have so many niggas I want on my roster. And I would never. I'm just letting y'all know for the ones that watch. <sighs> Would never tell your business on Jesus Christ. So contact me. I would never tell your business. Never in life. I think it's so unsafe. I think it's so disingenuous. It's not good. So I'm just letting y'all know. Who is you shooting for? Because you just anybody, baby, whole... that just catches my interest. I'm just letting y'all know. I have never in the 30 years I've been alive on this earth ever told a man business, and I never will because I do get, and then you got some men just like to have fun here and there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, ugh. Pause. It's now. It's fucking, this name of this podcast is going to be Hey Yo. What's next? Yo, you uh, you said um something you said at your birthday party. We're going to address that, too. Uh -huh. And I was curious, not to go super serious, but yeah. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm gay. Yes. So they always counted me out. Yes. Again, this Jay listens. I love you. A great interviewer, Jay. All right, thank you, brother. You a great interviewer. Go ahead. Thank you. That's learned, though. Mm -hmm. You ain't just come up with that. Where did you get that from? How how have you experienced that in your life to understand that they all, you always gonna be counted out? Well, see, I, I fit all. Uh, so let's just start. This. Oh, this is gonna be good. Let's just start with saying, okay, so let's go on my community, mm -hmm. right? Is okay. No, actually, let me start with the black community. So in the black community, okay, fat is shunned upon, hmm. gay is shunned upon, fat is shunned upon, gay is shunned upon, and black in our own community is shunned upon. Hmm. You have to still be a certain skin tone, okay? So I don't fit in, I'm not red bone, I'm brown skin. I'm not small and I'm not masculine, okay? So let's go over to my community of LGBTQIA. I'm not small. It's no fats, no fems. It's, you wouldn't know because you're not a gay man. But in my community, it's something called no fats and no fems. So they don't want a fat ass or they don't want a feminine man. So no fats, no fems, and I'm black. Okay? When you look at Piedmont, that's not for us. Okay? That's for James and Peter. Those are for, that was created for them. They just allowed us to partake in what they had going on. What you mean, Piedmont? I'm saying... When you go to 5th and Piedmont in Atlanta, the gay area that's for us, that wasn't created for black gay men. That was created for white gay men. I didn't even know they, that was a gay, or yes. it, it's a gay area. And yes, they have our Piedmont. gay flag. Out, they have our gay flag on the walkway. They have our gay bars, which I love and I appreciate. And there's a lot of gay men, that white men, 
that allowed us to come into their spaces. And I've met them and I love them and they're amazing, but they were genuinely not created for us. So even in my community, to a certain extent, I'm not accepted. So you have a lot of people in my community that I, that I give hope to. Like, they was coming up to me, like even like, I, I love when my bigger gay men come up to me, they like, oh my God, Brian, sexy. You just give me so much hope because you literally do fall in all the category, all the boxes, and I'm hot shit. And so I was saying at my party, you cannot allow nobody to put you in a box or make you feel like you're assigned to a box that you can't achieve what it is that you want to achieve in your life. You still could achieve everything that it is that you want to achieve. You just have to be consistent and work hard to do that. But Big Sexy, mm -hmm. you got, what, 700,000 followers. Mm -hmm. You Big Sexy, mm -hmm. you can do that. Nobody know me. I can achieve everything that I want to achieve in life. You said you can't? Yeah, that's what but somebody... You but you, do you think that I just woke up one morning and I had 700,000 followers? It don't work like that. I've been doing this for a long motherfucking time, too, and I think that's what people get it misconstrued, and they think that things that are happening for people just has happened overnight. You don't know how long Sexy Red has been in the studio working on her music. You don't know how long Tyler Perry been trying to act. You don't know how long you don't know. So people only look at the finished product, which I'm not even a finished product. I'm still on the grind. But people look at the ending product of what they think is the end, not knowing the nights you don't cry, not knowing the times you don't lost your page, not knowing the times you don't knock on doors and they getting accepted, not knowing the adversity that you have been through. So you can't just go by that. I didn't just wake up and had 700,000 followers. I had to work to get there. I had 100K, I had 200K, I had 300K. It was times I lived in Savannah, Georgia, I would walk around the motherfucking park broke as fuck with my dog, just finding something to do so I just wouldn't be in the house. Bored in my summer, in my sorrow, I would walk around the park, didn't park, didn't have shit to do, would get on my phone, pop my shit. People didn't see those signs. Mm -hmm. I would walk downtown, no fucking car, feet hurting, sweating, stinking, musty. I remember those days. Go sit down uh, downtown at the Mexican grill bar, sit there. All my friends was up here in the land. I was broke as fuck, couldn't get up here, looking on my iPhone, looking on my phone, looking at them having a good time. So people don't see those type of things. It didn't just happen overnight for me, and it's still not happening overnight. I still have to put in the work and grind to get where I'm going. So you can't always think just because you see a person have a certain amount of followers that things are just giving easy to them. It's not. And people get this perception, and they always get it wrong. And so that makes them want to not constantly push what it is that they want to do. No, it don't work like that. I'm grinding and grinding and grinding. But did you always know you wanted to be this, I guess, um... What, what would I call it? This, I don't want to say influencer. That's a small of a box. This renaissance man, right? Did you always, did you always know that you- Shout out to Beyonce, my sister. <laughs> did you always know that you wanted to be this person? Always. If l Let me tell you this, Jay. If I was the leaders of right now, God forbid, I promise you people would come up from all over, people who I grew up with, people who I went to school with, they would say, let me tell y'all something. That has always been his personality. He has always had a big personality. I know y'all may think it's a facade, but let me tell you, I am one of the gays that went to my school that the boys could not take. Mm. All the other gays, I, I wish, I, and I think I'm gonna do a documentary on myself so people can know the real me. They could not stand me, the boys. They could not stand me, not just because I was gay, but because I would not be the one that's gonna shut the fuck up. Mm. I'm the one, out of all of these gays in here, I'm the one that's going to clear the room, okay? When I was experienced being bullied, I still, in a sense, wasn't bullied. But I still was bullied because I know what if, I know what I felt. I know how they made me feel. But if you go back to growing up, my friends that was at my party, Dasha, Jamika, and Ishana, would tell you I was the gay in the whole school. I wasn't shutting the fuck up. So be very careful because I just found out your auntie passed and your mama passed. And I know what's going on with your little sister, and I'm going to say it. And I don't give a fuck. It's going to be fuck you. Because whatever it is that you said to me, I'm going to give it back to your motherfucking ass. And bitch, I'm going to have you so hurt. And I've always been like that. I've always had a big personality. Always. Hmm. You can't wake up and fake this. Because people know how I am off camera. I saw Shay in my house with my robe on. You can't fake this. I, I know what it is. A lot of people look at me and think this a fake facade because we see people fake all the time. Like, even people can't even be taken. People can't take me because I be so honest. Like, yeah, I done had days I done had shit in my drawers. It's days I done had accidents, fucking niggas, all that. I don't give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, I'm human. I'm a real person. And I don't give a fuck. 
I don't give a fuck about how none of y'all feeling here. I don't give a fuck about how nobody feel about how I look. I don't give a fuck because this is who I am. I've always been this way. Always, Jay. Mm. I swear to you, I have always been. I love that for me. I love that for me. And it'd be so unfortunate that some people can't take it. Because some people don't know who they are. They don't know what their personalities are. <laughs> they don't know what their calling is. A lot of people can't walk in their truth. A lot. So when you see this fat bitch walking to the restaurant and I'm really sashaying in real life, absolutely. The fuck did y'all think I was going to be doing? Mm. Bitch, I only get one life. And so I'm going to walk in my collar. And guess what? That's why if you took me and put me in Houston right now, any, any store I go in, they're going to know me. Because mm. bitch, I'm walking in my calling. How do we, without dumbing it down, mm -hmm. right? How do we, or is is it even possible to, and bear with me, because I might not say the right word for, at first, but when I'm thinking about the public, being considerate to the public, right? Like, for example, when I'm hearing you speak and I'm thinking, the first thing I thought is Lizzo, right? Mm -hmm. Living in her purpose, she's being who she wants to be, but sometimes it's the time and place for everything. Yes. Right? So, like, I guess it was the time where she went to the basketball game. Yes. And, like, I see through everything, it's like, bro, like, I understand you want to be you and, and, and love yourself, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But now when you make us have to digest this when we might not be comfortable with that. Absolutely. How do you manage being respectful to being who you are as well? Good question, Jay. You good. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you it. good. And I love your questions. I think for me, um, it is a balance, right? It's a silver lining. But I will say this. Me, when a lot of guys actually get around me, they say, mm, you actually really chill. Because of course I'm not on 10 all the time. Of course... I'm not parading around all the time as far as like being loud and extra. But if I'm sitting there and I'm around you, I have my legs crossed. I have my lip gloss on. So for me, that's what I mean by that. I'm going to always be who I am. It's never a time, Jay, that you're going to call me and say, hey, pull up to the bowler alley or hey, pull up to this cookout. And I'm coming all black jersey trying to be something that I'm not. Mm. So you just need to know anytime you invite me somewhere, I'm going to have my bag. I'm going to I might pop up and I have on a tutu. You just never know. If not, don't invite me. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck, but I'm just letting you know. If you do, it's no telling. I may come in a t-shirt and some jeans, but I may not, but that's on you. So for me, I'm going to always walk in who I am, but I think I'm in a place now in my life when it comes to 2024, um, I do get that because now that I'm older, I do see that people as adults, we do have a really, really big effect on children. And so when it does come to children, I am a little bit more sensitive because I do know that certain things are learned and they look at certain things and they look up to certain things. But when it comes to adults, it's always fuck y'all. I mean that in the humblest way. When it comes to kids, I'm a little bit more sensitive. When I get around my nephews, it's certain things I'm not talking about. It's certain things that I'm not doing. But when it comes to adults, it's always kiss my ass. Yo. Every time. So I don't know what my sister Lizzo was doing. I don't know, was it kids at that game? Yeah, it's a basketball game. Well, see, then I could see people feeling uncomfortable. I can understand that, and I'm pretty sure she gets that too. But as entertainers, you got to always keep these motherfuckers on their toes. So sometimes I know people always get caught in the middle of wanting to entertain and be seen at her, and I get that 100%. But on the flip side, when it comes to children, I am a little bit more sensitive because I do get that certain things can be inappropriate when it comes to kids. But when it comes to adults, <clears throat> Yo, you 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 make you make a good point that made me think about it. Cause when you came to the bowling alley for my birthday, again, thanks, you was cool. Like you wasn't like yeah, I'm, super flamboyant, but you was you was yes. I, I, I'm not gonna just be standing on the wall and standing on the ceiling and just standing on the chairs and. But let me standing. let me ask you this though: Have you had friends who you felt only could love you with certain stipulations until you be until you actually be who you are until you put on that tutu and then they like. Whoa, that's too much for me. Oh, yeah. And it's so crazy because not even just heterosexual straight people. It's my community, too. Because you have a lot of people in my community. Again, if you go back to what I said, no fats, no fems. I'm a feminine man. And so you have some people that have that perspective in their mind that even if you are gay, you have to be in a certain way. You have to be masculine. You have to move masculine. You have to look a certain type of way. You have to operate a certain type of way. So, yes, I've had friends that even... They say they're gay, but they still want me to operate in a certain way, not do too much. We go on a hair was not be too much, not wear certain things, but nobody could ever put me in a box. Mm. That's why I've never been in a relationship in my life. Contrary to what people may see, I have never been in a relationship in my life. I have had people I like. I have had people that I have dealt with, but I have never in my life of 30 years alive been in a relationship because nobody can put me in a box. 
Mm. Nobody can tell me what the fuck to do. I don't see how people can do it. Me personally. And it may be people that don't agree with me, but just me personally, I don't see how you can allow somebody that didn't put you on this motherfucking earth to dim your light and put you in a box. Sometimes people get in relationships and it's like prison. It legitimately be like prison that you can't act a certain type of way. You can't enjoy your life. You can't go out. You can't be seen. You can't walk out. I would never allow a bitch to put me on a box. Mm. That's why I can't keep a nigga. And a lot of times niggas get around me, I'm telling you, and they think that I'm a submissive guy because I wear a bag, but ain't no bitch telling me what to do. You could get the fuck from around me and I'll be meaning at anybody. Mm. Anybody, Jay, I swear to God, that's how I give it up. Any nigga, I don't give a fuck. You could get the, nobody telling me what to do. Y'all want to uh, shift the conversation for a second. To whom much is given, much is required, right? Now. You made a lot of money on Instagram. Yes, don't say no numbers. You do a lot of promotion on Instagram. Yeah. I'm pretty sure sometimes communication might have got misconstrued uh, or things happen. And I want I wonder for the people who may not feel like their promotion was seen or did well as the next promotion and then people start throwing a scam word around. Yeah, oh god. How, how do you deal with Have you I'm pretty sure you heard it cuz I've Absolutely. How do you deal with that? Because that, that messes up your brand. Like Absolutely. that could that can take away from money. Absolutely. 100 percent Let me say this to my girls out there that have worked with me, to my girls out there who know I do good business. I love y'all. To my girls out there who are patient, who pay my bills, who help me eat, who help me feed my family. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. So when it comes to that, as an influencer and as a lot of influencers, I think it's not one influencer in Atlanta that has not been called a scammer, right? Not to say that it's right, but what I'm saying is as influencers, we be learning, honestly. A lot of us be broke as fuck. A lot of us be ready to get the money. A lot of us be thirsty for the money. A lot of us be chasing the money because we be broke. We be trying to find our way. We be trying to pay our bills. We be trying to eat. And so we did not know the business. We didn't know how to operate. We didn't know how to answer the emails. Not being in a scammer way. For me, scammer is subjective. Scammer is your whole purpose is to take the money, leave, never do it. I think what has happened in the past with me is I get it. I get busy. I want to go bowling. I want to go party, doing bad fucking business. I done forgot to do her advertisement. Now she done reached out to me three times. I'm busy. I'm sleeping. Oh, God. Now she calling me a scammer. My purpose, I, I, I really wanted to get it done. But in that moment, I got caught up doing bad business. And so I think as influencers, you have to continuously learn and grow to do better business. That's what it be. It's really not even no excuses. I think every influencer has endured being called a scammer. And I think just a little bit, too, when it comes to our people, we are so quick to call somebody a scammer. When it comes to black people, when it comes to their business, when it comes to how they dealing with business, we are so quick. And I get it. I get it, because we hard on one, on one another, because we work hard for our fucking money. So that I do get, and that's why now I have a team. I won't be experiencing that now, and I haven't experienced that for a while, because I have a team of people who answer my emails, who make sure I'm staying on top of shit, who know when I get busy. I just had an event that drove me up the wall. I loved it. I was appreciative. I was thankful, but I had got so consumed in that. They answer my emails on the back end because I do get busy now. So it's all about learning and growing and just learning how to conduct business better and operate better so that you can continuously keep your coin coming in. Mm, that was a great answer. I'm wondering, do you like pay it back or pay it forward? Like, I guess if you all somebody? the time and in the past, what I would do is to say, I'll give you an extra free video. I'll give you an extra free post. Now I even do. I'm doing five businesses for free. I advertise five businesses because you got to always pay it back to your motherfucking people who help you eat and pay your bills. You helping them while they helping you. And I think that's where a lot of influencers get it fucked up too. These people are spending their hard earned money, do business right. And as I'm preaching to you, I'll be preaching to myself too. Hey, you was thirsty to get that motherfucking thousand dollars. You was thirsty to get that two thousand dollars. Do these people shit right. But sometimes when you just get so caught up in life and having a good time, sometimes you do operate in business wrong. But that's why you live and you learn. And so for me, I have lived and I have learned not to say that I won't make mistakes in the future, but those minuscule, small mistakes, I'm not having those no more. Mm, that's a fact. Yo, let's get to it, man. You had a birthday mm -hmm. uh, fashion show. Can I break it down first? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm going to break it down how my, my, my experience, right? I told you this like three times. So Big Sexy always does this. Uh, well, he's been doing this birthday fashion show for like two years now, right? Mm -hmm. Or birthday 
extravagance or whatever it could be. It might not be a, a fast show all the time, right? So last year he invited me. So I hit my, my line brother morning after, right? Like, yo, I want you to come to this 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 party with me. He like, uh, all right, bet. We end up missing the party or whatever. But it was like videos on Instagram. So he still happened to send me the video. <laughs> like, bro, that's the shit you wanted me to go to. And it was just like super gay. Like it was mad gay people right there, right? So I'm like, I felt bad. So Big Sexy invite me this year. And I'm like, bro, like you had me looking bad last year because like I wanted to go support you, but it was just mad gay people. But I wouldn't went, I would have mm. looked crazy. He's like, nah, bro. It's gonna be mad girls there. So I'm like, all right, this nigga support me all the time. So like even if it is gay, like, fuck it, suck it up, bro. Pause. Damn, that was bad. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> My bad. I'm me. You, you. I'm me. Absolutely. So I'm like, all right, just you know, just forget it. Even if it is gay, support your man. He be supporting you. All right, bet. Oh. Man, I go. First of all, forget the woman. Forget who was there. I pull up. You know how some people say like it's thousand people or like it, it thousand tickets sold, two thousand tickets sold, right? Like, and you be in there, you try to count. Like, is it really? Listen, to what I'm telling you. I pull up, and I'm like. Oh, no, nah, it is. Like, I'm like, oh, it's exactly what he said. I, I come in there, I'm like, yo, what? Love my people. I, in my mind, I'm like, yo, what in the... F bro, it was... You think I'm supposed to care about opinions? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Let's love my people. Yep. Next year, 5,000. Girls, we sell it out. Go ahead. I'm sorry, bro, Jay. And, 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 and listen, and, and <laughs> all respect to... A few niggas can't even pay y'all bills. All, res man. all respect to the influencers that was there. And, and, and don't... Take this to heart when I'm about to say this. It wasn't no like big celebrity in the building for people to come. It wasn't like no special guest. Big Sexy was a special guest. Love my people. <laughs> so when I say I, the first thing I think is like, yo, this is real influence. Fuck all that Instagram stuff. Fuck all that. That shit that niggas be talking about. This is real. Like these people can't even see him. And I just had, I wouldn't be me if I ain't actually just like, when you see that, part of me know what it means, but I'm just asking you, just curious, like, what does that mean? Think, think about this. Not just that, though. The times you had to, the work you had to put in. Oh. The, the, everything you had to get to to get to this level to really understand that it's not just 700,000 followers. Because mm -hmm. we people got millions of followers and they can't do half of that, bro. When you see that. What does that mean? Oh, it means everything. It means I love my girls. I love my boys. I love, this is the thing. I'm a personable bitch. And so I think a lot of influencers and a lot of people in Atlanta and a lot of content creators, they get delusional as hell and they forget the reason why they're able to eat a filet mignon steak and they're able to sit on their motherfucking ass and wear their mink lashes. It's because of the people. And I think I'm one influencer, not the only, but I think I'm one influencer that if you see me out, I could be at your house. I could be at Roof Chris, I'm stopping and I'm having a conversation and I'm taking a picture because I'm not nothing without the people. And I think oftentimes when people have these events and these girl events and these brunches and these empowerment events, you get there, a motherfucker can't even say hello. They bougie as fuck, they nasty as fuck, they rude as fuck, don't even want to give you a hug, don't even acknowledge that you spent your hard earned money to come out and see their crusty ass. But for me, I'm going to try my best. There were so many people in there and I went around and at least touched or hugged as many people as I could. I'm human. So I couldn't get to everybody because I'm showing my gratitude and my thanks and I think that's the core of who I am. I'm always going to give gratitude. I'm always going to give thanks. I'm always going to be appreciative. I'm always going to show my people that I'm thankful that they came out and so I think I'm one influencer. If you see me at the gym, I'm going to at least have a conversation with you. I'm never too good for the people. I'm never too good to say thank you. I'm never too good to say hello and it's going to always pay off because you have so many influencers in Atlanta, in Houston, in New York, all over the world that can't do that because them hoes forget who got them there and it's the people point blank period it's the people mm. down even wait because no nah, you skipping some shit hold up hold up there's some people out there who know it's the people but they just get followers bro yeah like and, and i want to talk about this for a second because like it's it's influences out there with a lot of followers that that understand the importance of the people but they still can't do that like i don't think you understand Cause I think I like part of me feel like when I see you, you confident, and I think you think that's like that's what it's supposed to be, and that's good. You think that, mm -hmm. right? But there's another side that is like, yo, like 
nah, bro, this is real. Like, I don't know. I don't know even how to explain it. It's yeah. just like, you you not you don't look at that and be like, damn, bro, like this is really where I'm at right now. After oh, most definitely. It is it's mind blowing to me too. I think people just be resonating with my realness. Um, just me being who I am. I think so many people be wanting to live this cookie cutter image and people don't really talk about real shit. I remember I had went to this event one time and it was like, oh, raise your hand if you ever shitted on a nigga before. And I was, it was about 30 of us in there, a whole bunch of sissies that they have experienced that before. And I was the only one raised my hand and everybody said, ew. And it was a room full of gay men that have experienced it. And I'm using, I know it may be vulgar, but I'm using that as an example to say, I'm just myself. And everybody gagged. They said, you did? I did. Because I'm human. Oh, the fuck do y'all... And so I, that's how I operate. And I, I think that just resonates. So people, how I even talk about my, I get my bags from the plug. We live in Atlanta. Everything is in a certain cut. You're supposed to look at dress a certain type of way. And so I remember I was in a club one time and the guy was like, where you got your bag from? I said, child of blood. And this bag was $50. I said, you're not supposed to be saying that. Excuse me? Why shouldn't I? Who the fuck are you? Am I supposed to be impressing you or the next bitch? I'm not. I don't give a fuck. So I think that's what just resonates with people. They just, I'm just myself. I don't know. Like, I'm just myself. And and women, I just, uh, they resonate with me because I love them. So I, you know, my girls just come out. Yeah, that's why I say, like, yo, gay or not, bro. Like, I really, like, salute you. And just, like, even outside of, like, the friendship. Because, like, bro, we talked, like, just yesterday. Mm -hmm. You gave me some great game. Like, just some, just, just great advice. You feel me? Outside of that, it feels like you one of them people that it feels good to know. Like it's like, bro, I know this dude personally, mm -hmm. right? And oh, that's an honor. Yeah, no, I I honor my friends just like I would honor any athlete, celebrity, whatever. Because like, just like I say, it's an honor to watch LeBron James play. Like, cause he's a great, he's a great athlete. It's an honor to know somebody like you, cause it's like that's a good person. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm trying to say? So like, that's I, bro, I, I salute you. Uh, I know you got to go. It's five. You, no, you good. You good? We good. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I salute you, bro. I think um. Definitely keep doing what you're doing for sure. Yes, thank you so much. You too. You know, I I be wanting people to because I, I outside looking in like when I before I even moved here, I would see so many bosses doing these events. Sierra Glanshaw, Rashida, like boss women who I know in real life have a real check, and I would see them have these events and they have 300, 400 people come out. And in my mind, I'm like, I could never do that. How the fuck are they doing that? And so I was one of those people outside looking in. So I always tell people who are outside looking in at me, hey, you could pull 10,000 people. Mm. This is small to compare to. So don't, <laughs> it, I, all the secret sauce to success, and I haven't even touched halfway where I want to be at yet. But the secret sauce to even moving a mountain, just a crumb of that mountain is consistency. Even when you had those days when you want to give up, even when you had those days when you don't want to do it, it's consistency that's going to win the race. That is the rule to the gumbo. I'm telling you, it's consistency. Because here it is, you've been a stop show podcast in December, and your big break could have been in 2026. Okay? It's not going to happen when you want it to happen. It's going to happen when it's divine time. And this is outside of religion. This is outside of God. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you believe in whatever it is that you believe in, it's everything is in divine timing. Jay Hill time to be on national television with his own show, maybe in 2028. Mm -hmm. It may be. You just, and guess what? You will still be popping. You will still be Jay Hill. That may be your time. Mm -hmm. Nene Leakes didn't get on TV until she was 40 years old. It was her time. Mm -hmm. So I think as people, we want it when we want it. Oh, I feel like I've been doing this three years. Why haven't I been invited to the to the Black Effect Podcast Festival? No, it's not mm. your time yet. I tell my friends all the time, bro, like, I've gotten to the place now where... Wake up! Somebody asked me, uh, this nigga, <laughs> not... We born you, bro? No, <laughs> But nah, uh, this is a great conversation, but I, I, I get to the point where all of the work that I'm doing is not work. It's like... I don't know the exact word, but it's just like it's like automatic. You know what I'm saying? Like it's you just, it's, is a it's, prime exit. It's check. like it's not work. Like getting up, editing anything like that, like it's not work. It's like I don't even care about the likes anymore. I don't care about what comes from it. It's like, bro, that's just that's what I gotta do. Because I know timing. All you gotta do is keep Oh, going. Jay. And you cause let me tell you something about you. You I watched from a distance. So I seen I I kid you not, and I'm gonna be one hundred with you. It was one day you posted this interview. And this is this go to show you how fake people is and, and how we human. You posted this one interview. 
mind you, remember I did your podcast. Mm -hmm. I hadn't talked to you for probably years, right? I seen, mind you, I still follow. I see, still see everything. I don't know who it was, and this just going to show you how people be fake as fuck. I seen that you posted this interview one day on your page. I don't know if it was with T.I. I don't know who it was. And in my mind, I said, oh, my God. Damn, I should have been supporting him more. I swear, to God. <laughs> I swear to God. I promise to God. I swear. It's cr I know that it sounds so crazy, but I li I don't know who. I don't know if it was T.I. I don't know if it was it was either T.I. or Lil Mama because Lil Mama was big to me. I know, to me, that was big to me. T Lil Mama was on the stage of Beyonce and Jay-Z. A lot of people can't say that. I don't know who it was that you had posted. And that just going to show you the mind of people. That's how they do. Yeah, yeah. They don't support, but as soon as they even see you making an incremental, then they want to join the movement. That's the importance of consistency. I said, damn, I should have been supporting him more. Damn, this nigga doing it. I swear to God. Mm. I promise you. So that just going to show you the made way. Yo, speaking of that, yo, how did you, when did you and Amy get so cool? It's my sister for life. Because cause Amy is, hold on one second. I'll take your time. Amy is, ah, get, oh, period. What happened? I'm, I'm doing a podcast, sister. Is it anything personal? Yeah, as long as we still have sunlight. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so that's at 6.30. Yeah, so as long as 6.30, we... Ah! Yeah. Okay, perfect. It's going to be sunlight. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Down. All right, that's my girl. Who up? Um, Alonzo. Yes. Yeah, sh my sister Alonzo. Who's, who's Alonzo? Superstar hairstylist, Alonzo Arnold. Okay. But um, because Amy's so real, like... I don't meet a lot of people who are real. I think when it comes to Atlanta, people do this with me too. I think that's why I like you too. You just real, Jay. I like real people. I like for people to come around me and say, oh, I'm broke. Mm. Not, not that I want somebody to sit in a somber, but I love somebody that's it. Because guess what? My response to be after that, hey, what you need? 500? I love, I cannot stand to get around somebody and you saying you had 10 Bugattis and you're lying. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you can't feed people shit and sell them in sugar. Mm. You can't. Nobody is stupid. Right now, if I can't even say, ooh, Jay, I got three Bentley sitting in the house. Jay, instantly in your mind, you're going to know I'm lying. Mm. It's just what it is. Now, I can say, well, I just got me a new Benz. That sounds more realistic. <laughs> but if I can to you right now and say, yeah, I have a Rolls Royce at my house, a Bentley, and a G-Wagon they all paid for. Who, am I? Who you think you lying to? You would probably sit here like, oh, yeah, okay. But in your spirit, you would know that's a lie because you can't just feed people shit and tell them that it's sugar. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I have encountered a lot of delusional people who get around me and lie about what they're doing, lie about where they're going, lie about what they have. And so for Amy, Amy is just a realist. Like if my girl up, she going to let you know. If she not feeling it that day, she going to let you know. She's real. She's authentic. I love her. That's mm -hmm. my girl. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. Like Amy is one of them people that... I admire from afar that you know. I don't know if you ever fuck with somebody, but you don't. I don't think that they know you fuck with them that. Yes. Like, that's what, like that's how Amy is. Like I like I got so much love for Shorty. Like she's and even when I seen her get on like loving hip hop, I'm like, bro, that's so dope. I want it. I want her to win. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, nah, I can definitely understand it. But speaking of loving hip hop, mm -hmm. you going? No. You ain't mm -hmm. gonna do it? No, I'm not doing it. Um. I think for me, I, I've done cameos with my girl Amy. Love her so much. But cameos, as far as saying, I show up to her events, I show up to lunch, I've done cameos like that. For me, I have created a brand of my own, and I am not going to ever degrade myself being the character that people want me to believe, which is a messy gay black man. I don't want to do it. I'd rather starve and go back to my hometown. I'm not up for that. I'm not doing it. It's not up for debate. I have worked too hard to be able to inspire women, to be able to inspire people, to be able to inspire other black gay men, showing them you don't have to be a messy queen in order to be seen and heard. You could take other routes and inspiring people and being a mogul, a legend, an icon. You don't have to do it in a messy way. And so for me, I'm never going to play into what people want me to be at so, all. So you wouldn't do, um, what's the other, what's the, it's like a gay show, right? Like uh, on Zeus or some shit. What is it called? Um, Bad Boys? Yeah. No, I would not. Mm. I would not. It, it would have to be contracted in a certain way, and it'd have to be a certain substantial amount of money. Because what you have to understand is, and I'm not being boastful, but I make a good coin doing what I'm doing. This last event I had, ah, 
took it to the bank. So I don't have to get on there and bust my teeth, bust my nose, bust my forehead in order to be seen and heard. I could get on my platform and reach millions of people if I want to. I could walk into Target. I could walk into Walmart. They're going to go up for me. I don't have to get on there and I don't have to fight anybody. Now, if it was for a substantial amount of money, if it was for inspiring somebody when they reached out to me and they wanted me to do the show with Roly, absolute Roly is my sister. People don't know Roly in real life is a beautiful, sweetheart, amazing person. They wanted me to walk with her through her surgery and be there and talk to her and give her confidence and speak life into her. Absolutely. That's my brand. That's what I want to do. I'll do that shit for free. But when it comes down to getting on there with my community and fighting for nothing and fighting people who have nothing to lose, I'm not down for it. I have my own lane, my own brand. I am who I am. A lot of people trying to do what I'm doing, so I don't have to degrade myself in no shape, form, or way in order to be seen. So what you think about Zeus Networking as a whole? Just curious, because I feel like they've built a brand off of Absolute. They have built an amazing brand, and especially for him to be a black man. I have met him. I have been around him. He's a nice guy. His team, his people, his producers, they're amazing. And I would never sit here and say I would never work with them in life. Because you never know. You never know what opportunities. You never know what could be talked about. You never know about what checks could be written. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying in that way, mm. especially for nickels and dimes. That's out the question. Mm. I'm not getting on no platform having to fight for nickels and dimes. It has to be a substantial amount where I can say, here, mommy, here's 40000 Here, sister, here's 20000 If we're not talking substantial amounts of money and then still be able to pocket something and put it on the house, if we're not talking that, I'm not doing that because I don't have to. Mm. I've created my own brand, my own light, my own walk, my own talk. I'm in my own lane. And so that's what it is for me. But I think their brand fits. For the people who want to do that. Now this TV fits for the people who want to do that because it's something for everybody, but it's just not for me. Mm. Okay. Um, one second. You said my good? Why you asked me that? Yeah, they, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yo, um, we just waiting. They said 530. Uh, you got somebody else? We good. Oh, okay. I told you we chopping up at this point. Okay. Just, yo, you did some bullshit to your people. You gotta explain yourself. You popped out with a podcast. Niggas loved it. You was getting mm -hmm. a lot of love from it. Then mm -hmm. you just disappeared. Like that. So this this is for me. Um, I enjoyed it <laughs> while I was doing it. I enjoy anything while I'm doing it. I think I'm gonna always give time and energy into anything that I'm doing, and I'm always gonna come and I'm gonna always elevate anything that is going on whether people want to acknowledge it or not, because I'm a genuine person. And anytime you're a Gemini like me, and anytime I go into any atmosphere with anything that's going on, I'm going to try my best to help genuinely. Mm. I just feel like when it's not reciprocated, I leave, okay? Because what happens in life, you have to understand, me, God is going to always provide Nobody's going to ever stop my show. You can get online and you can lie. You can talk. You can make videos. You can post. You can make YouTube videos. Nobody's going to ever stop my shine. Because what's destined for me, what God has for me, no motherfucker is going to stop. So any situation, I'm telling you, I'm like that with niggas. I'm like that with friends and family. Anybody, Jay. And I mean this on my mother. She could drop dead when she's standing there. Anybody could get caught off with me. And I will walk by you like I've never known you in life. That's how I give it up. I think what happens with people is people go through so many heartbreaks and stupid shit in relationships and you've been dealing with this nigga for nine years. You've been dealing with your baby mama for six years and you're stupid and you're dumb and you're weak and I'm not that person. Any situation I'm in, I will leave. Any friend will get cut off. I have a friend that I'm walking by like he's invisible. He's a ghost to me. Because when you treat me a certain type of way, somebody who is giving, somebody who is thoughtful, somebody who will help people, when you ever think you're gonna treat me a certain type of way or play in my face, you have no more access. And it be hard for people, and they be hurt because a lot of people do this. This is what they do. When they say they're able to cut somebody up, they do this. And then you still see her two weeks later. She laid up with her baby daddy. He done beat her up a week before that, and she done let it go. You see him. He's back in his situation after he's been disrespected. Not me. I don't operate like that. So anybody could get. So when I was in that situation, and I felt like it wasn't reciprocated back to me. I don't give a fuck what a motherfucker lying about. People know the truth, okay? 
when it's not reciprocated back to me, I leave. And it'd be so easy because God going to provide and I'm going to get into a new situation that's going to still be popping. I'm going to still sell our shows. People are going to still love me because nobody stops my show. Mm. And so that's what it was. But I love that people appreciate it and love it for what it is. But I will say this. In order to do something like that, you have to be secure in yourself, not sexuality, but you have to be secure in the position that you play in your life. So if we're talking about relationships and you beat up your wife and you beat up your fiance and you hate your motherfucking mama, it's never going to work. Because when you're sitting in front of a bitch like me that's able to articulate myself, I'm able to call the devil out on his shit. You're going to always be offended by the things that I say because I only speak in truth of what I see in reality. So no matter if a person try to make up a lie of what they try to perceive it to make themselves feel better about what's going on me and you know the truth mm. and so when you always sitting in front of somebody who's able to always call you out on your shit you never going to be able to take because i'm always going to be able to sit in what it is that's going on so when you're really a woman beater in real life and you push your fiance down the steps and you choke her and you hate your motherfucking mama because you don't know who your daddy is when you sit in front of a person like me and i'm able to call it out you're never going to be able to take and it's okay because god is good life still goes on i'm still blessed i'm still fabulous and that podcast is still non-existent because nobody stops my show, but I don't know if it's the other way around. Mm. And we've seen that the proof is in the pudding. What happened to it? You always supposed to be able to keep going over your show because nobody stops mine, but everybody can't say the same in return. So that's in the past. <laughs> I've moved on. Life is good. God is good. and All the time. Yo, how do we, um, how do we, uh, because, bro, when you, you, you got some big shoes to, to fill, right? Like. You talking about some you always giving and helping niggas out mm -hmm. and shit like that, and when it ain't reciprocated, you out. How does somebody reciprocate the energy that they can't they can't give? Well, this is the thing. I don't ask for much from people, even when it comes down to my friends. I I'm not the person that's calling and saying, "Hey, let me borrow fifty dollars." I don't do that. Not saying that it's an issue with it. And I was just saying this other day. I'm a Gemini. I hate Jay. When people make me have to get in my demonic Gemini bag. Because when I'm not, I will literally take the shirt off of my bag. And I will get... literally do what I can. Oh my I have God. so much empathy for people. But when, I think that's why we have the worst rap. Because when it comes to Geminis, when you ever think that I won't flip on you, mm, you're sadly mm, mistaken. Mm. When you ever think that you won't get this treatment, it applies for air. The only person that I can't walk by like they're an invisible ghost is my mama. That's the, it don't matter what she do to me. That's one woman, I'll always work it out with her. Everybody else, ah, could kiss my motherfucking ass. And I, I mean that shit. I mean it. You'll be bye-bye, ghost. Even if I think about you, even if I miss you, you'll be bye-bye. Mm. But never reach out. I, because I know how I give it up with people. And people who really genuinely know me, they know it. No matter if you can't take my personality, no matter if you feel like I'm extra, you know I'm a beautiful person and I do what I can. I do what I can. And that's why I love people like my friend Flex. Flex, when I tell you Flex love me, regardless of people say, oh, he want to be like you, he want to act like you, he want to do, he loves me. He acknowledges how I have helped him. He acknowledges who I am. He acknowledges he loves me. Shout out to my bracelet and my chain. People like that will always be connected to me because guess what? If Flex was to get upset with me today, he's so much of a real person. I told him this. I said, you the type of person that me and you fell out, you would still, even if you talk your shit because he's a shit talker, he would still be able to say, oh, but Sexy did this. It's nothing worse than a motherfucker that you have helped out and they can't even say Oh, now I'm just a horrible person. But you didn't talk about all the times I lend you money. You didn't talk about all the times I was there for you. You didn't talk about all the times you stayed with me. You didn't talk about, now I'm just a horrible person. And I would say Flex would be the bitch that say, well, Sexy did do this. And so people like that I respect. Somebody get this nigga the fuck out of here, man. Oh, you Big know what sexy. the fuck going on, Jay. <laughs> oh, my you know God. what the fuck going on, Jay. You know, and, they, and they, they look at us like we be so demonic when we get in. Because I, I see that demon on you. Mm. But I, <laughs> but just the thing, because I'm so big on horoscopes, Jay. Me and you got to be alike. It don't matter if I'm gay, you straight. We both Geminis. Our birthday's too close. It have to, I'm so big on horoscopes. And I know once you get to that point, the devil comes out. Mm. 
And when you said, it, bro, it's like, I know it. people, it's like people can acknowledge. I'm not about to get into this shit. Oh, you Yo. know how. <laughs> I'm not about to get into this shit. They don't acknowledge Yo. none of the amazing things you done <laughs> did, how you changed their life, how you done did pour so much into them. It's just now I'm such a horrible person. Okay. That's how I'm at a place. Okay. That's how you feel. Okay. I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because God going to always prevail. And the truth is going to always prevail. Always. And that's just how I see it. And I know. I know, Jay. When I tell you, I know. Mm-hmm. And you know what we fall short at, too? When we get upset, we get so demonic mm-hmm. that it just overtops everything. That's so true. they be like, that's what they always say. Do you know we are the, they say, we are the worst signed. It was, of I think it was either 2022 or 2023. They said Gemini's are the worst people to encounter. Mm. And every time I tell somebody a Gemini, they say, oh, no. Horrible. I don't think, you know, it's funny about the Gemini, because I ain't going to tell, I ain't going to get into the other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think um, when it comes to Gemini's, I don't think that we got two sides. I think we don't have any balance. So just as I can be so nice. Down for the punch the wall. Like, so it's like, I don't think it's that it's two sides. I just think it's, it's no balance. So just as I can be an nice. uh, angel. Oh, I could be I nice. can be so nice give you the shirt off my back. <sighs> oh, we could tap. <laughs> and you know what, too? Sometimes when we tap into that demon, we we could be so nonchalant. Don't be caring. And it's bad. We could be sad. We could miss the person. Oh, but we are sitting at demonic devil and be like, mm, give a fuck. Mm. It is what it is. Fuck you. Mm. Cause I, I feel like for me it's like, for me, I've worked like super hard. Like bro, I've worked so hard not to be the person of where I came from. Mm-hmm. So when I get when when I feel like somebody takes me take me to that level, I feel like you deserve it. Cause I'm I'm not that person all the time. If anything, I'm somebody who mastered the art of like forgiving, like being empathetic, like you said. And I just don't go there. So if you take me there, you deserve it. Yes, that's how I look at it. Absolutely. I, and, and the same for me, because when I tell you on the flip side of me being a tough person and having a big personality, oh, Jay, when I tell you, for real, for real, when it comes to my friends, family, sister, brother, oh, I do what I can. I When I tell you I genuinely try to do what I can, I be trying to put people in position. I be trying to help people make money. I be. It's when you think that you can play with me that is when I'm going to tap into that other side and I'm going to show you. But if we good, I'll be trying to make sure that I control my attitudes, my moodiness. my I'll be really trying to make sure I'll be giving. I check on people. You good. You a you. But it's when you think, and we, you know, we know that we see everything. Mm. Even if, even if Jay, even if you think we don't know what's going on, we know what's, and, we, and guess what we love to do, Jay? Play stupid. <laughs> And we've mastered the art. We are, it's so bad because my friend, my best friend, True, he know me so well. I've been, I ask someone to do something. He say, don't stop. Don't, don't do that with me. Because you know, and I literally be like, no, I'm for real. What did, and I already know what's going on. I've already seen it. I heard it. I've already did the, re- I already be knowing what the fuck going on. Oh, don't ever think that I'm sitting in a room and I'm not listening. I see it. I see it. I he was telling me the other day something had happened in the club. And because I just want to see how much of a liar he is, I let him just give the whole, because I had already seen it. Mm. I seen it. I was sitting there. I don't give a fuck if my back was turned. I seen it. I'm always looking. Mm-hmm. And he gave me exactly what I seen. I, I I love to just test people because I just want to know, okay, let's see how much of a liar you are. Because I already done seen it. I seen it. Mm. And before, and you know, as Gemini too, before we address it, we've watched it 10 times. Yep. Because we just want to make sure, now when I say this, it don't matter. It got to be, yeah. No. Yep. That's not I got to make sure I cross my T's and dot my I's. You feel me? Like, I got to make Jay, sure. We going to, so just know, if we saying something right now, we done seen you do it five times. So yeah, you may say, no, I don't. Okay. So cool. we're going to leave it like that. Bet. <laughs> but I know what the fuck going on because I've already seen you do this shit five times. Right. It's cool. Got you. It's I'm right. good for that. It's good. <laughs> I'm, when I tell you I'm good for that, I'm good. It's bad. And that's why sometimes people say we so hard to deal with because we is like a, um, we like a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Gemini's are weirdos. That's why I don't, like, I want to be, I want to become more friends with you just to see how weird you are. I want to see if you like regular or weird because Gemini's are weirdos too. 
we could be very weirdos because we like puzzles. We very somebody is saying, "Oh, what's wrong? Nothing." <laughs> he just asked me like, and we good? stand on it. It's nothing wrong, and it be something wrong, and it's like, but it, you weird. But it also be nothing wrong though. It do be wrong. It do be something wrong. Like though. literally, I just came in here. I was rushing. I was just like, my mind was trying to get focused. He like, you good? I'm like, I'm literally good. Like I'm the type of person that like, I'll be happy as fuck, and they be like, yo, you good? I'm like, bro, I'm actually happy as shit, and they be like. You look like you upset. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm fucking, I'm That's happy. like the bowling alley. I le- like, you real, Jay. I like you, though. You real. Because you was like, yeah, I done got my niggas and they say I have weird energy. Yeah. I've never heard nobody be real enough to say that before. Nah, people done said it. Because I just be chilling to myself. It's like, bro, sometimes I don't want to be, I don't want to deal with you niggas, bro. It's just like. But that's so weird because do you know how many people can't acknowledge that about themselves? Yeah. To say that people have told me I have weird energy, <laughs> that that's a real thing to say. I know who I am, so I'm good. They can say what the fuck they want. But you know they not saying weird energy like sitting there trying to set a nigga up. It's different levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They saying weird energy like, what's wrong with you? Like, you not vibing. Not weird. It's different weirds. They not saying weird like, this a nigga I don't want to be around. He's shysty. He's shady. Though. That's a different type of weirdo. They talking about... Just out of place. Like, you probably just give out of place energy sometimes. Like, yeah. nah, is this I feel nigga like I okay? Be, what the fuck is wrong with him? I be out of place sometimes, though. I be at That's places what it is. that I don't want to be at. But I'm here because so I can get paid. <laughs> like, I show up because I got to be here. I think one of, my, one of my captains. I'm just here to get the job done. I don't give a fuck about y'all niggas. Yeah. And but, I'm learning, though, as human beings, everybody is different. Facts. I, that I am learning. That is one thing about myself and my personality that I am learning, even with him. I have literally, like, when he done went back home, one, and I'm the type of person that anything I do, I sit in it. I don't even, I'm not even too big on, I, anything I say, I stand on it. But one thing that I had popped up in my mind one day, and I was like, you wrong. And I would get upset with him if I take him out to the club and he's not dancing, he's mm-hmm. not moving. And I'm like, when I thought about it one day, I'm like, that's so weird. You, what the fuck is wrong with you? I swear to God, it was like a cathartic, random moment. Like, bitch, everybody is not like that. Mm. That it don't mean that there's nothing wrong with him. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's that's a controlling, weird, demonic spirit. Everybody is not gonna be in a club dancing. All that's not his personality. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's like somebody telling you to sit down. That's the same thing. Mm. That's not his personality. He's not gonna be just dancing. He could just be chilling, having a good time. There's nothing wrong with him. He just vibing, having a good time. And so you people have to just understand everybody is different. No, everybody no. have different personalities. And it's like, nah, bitch, that's you. That's extra having a good time. And that's fine. But that don't mean that that is his personality. He could very well have anxiety. He chilling. He's good, bitch. Nah, facts. Nah, this is good, bro. This is good, dog. Uh, um, That's all I got, man. Let me. Oh, well, I asked you off camera. What? Nothing. All right. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, Big Sexy. Now, this is one of them. We probably do this a couple more times, man. All right. Now, so wonderful. So, I mean, you got somebody else? I got a couple people today. But oh, you good? Yeah, 5 30. Yeah. No, you good. You good. They here? Not yet. Not yet. J Hill Podcast, Big Sexy. It's a wrap. We out. Love y'all so much.